Welcome to this video demonstration. Lecturing is a traditional solution to increasing education efficiency, while tutoring is often considered an ideal teaching model. So how can we incorporate tutoring into large classes? We all know what lecturing in a large class looks like. Uh, the reason people took this approach because, was because they wanted to make this But what does tutoring in a large class look and sound like? And how is it facilitated? This course is a third-year elective taught to 150 or more science majors. Worksheet-based group activities are done in every 80-minute class, so students know what to expect. Okay, so we're going to do um, activity one, uh, and then we'll have a little uh, review of that, and then we're going to move on to activity two. So activity one is the first thing to do. As the instructor sets up the task, teaching assistants distribute worksheets to groups of four. So as you get started, just to, just to read the, um, the actual quote from the meeting, um, to achieve the ultimate objective of the convention. Students may be quieter while starting. Some initial solo work may involve calculating, graphing, or applying other skills. But soon, groups are sharing ideas and thinking together. This forces articulation of concepts and generates feedback about thinking. Our role as instructors is to circulate, observe, and listen to work and guide thinking when asked. Co-teachers or teaching assistants can help keep tutor-student ratios at roughly 1 to 50. When tutoring, we try to clarify Socratically. Listening to students articulate their own thinking is important. We also try to interact with as many groups as possible. When common issues are observed, we can help the whole class by writing a hint on the document cam or chalkboard and discussing it. Students will stop to listen because this tactic is common and helpful. For more involved activities, adding checkpoints at roughly 10-minute intervals will help all students keep pace. Here the instructor is copying commonly seen student results to generate a clicker question. This is excellent for giving feedback to students. It helps them see their work in context with everyone else and generates discussion around the key concepts. Our challenge as instructors is to prompt and guide student thinking, ideally telling or explaining only after they have struggled a bit. So, um, you probably got lambda to equal what? Uh, 0.7. Okay. I suspect what happened here. Um, I'm thinking that um, this split that we have, the two most popular answers, what's, what's interesting about the two most popular answers, A and C? How do they relate to each other? Yeah. Ten south of twenty. So, where do you think um, people diverged and went different directions in this problem? The equator. Okay. <laughs> the equation. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it looks like half. Some some people uh, forgot to take into account the airborne fraction, right? The airborne fraction being fifty percent, which means actually we have to admit double. Right. We're already into it. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little background about activity two and where this information is coming from. So, um, in 
we find that lecturing is best used as a follow-up to the work students have which done. Which gives us a fairly nice linear relationship between the... Asking a few clicker questions also helps us check on comprehension or skills before starting work again. But just a really couple of really quick clicker questions. Um, how much total, carb, total limited carbon corresponds to a two degree temperature increase? Evidently, everyone is ready for the next task. Tutoring in large classes involves using activities and strategies to guide and facilitate both group and whole class discussions. We find this much more satisfying than one-way delivery, and the techniques are not difficult to master.